Tutorial 3 Room Editor Welcome back to another Momini Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, we will build on our work from previous lessons and play around a bit with the Room Editor. As already discussed, the Studio automatically creates two default rooms a menu room and a regular room. Let's edit room 1. Previous tutorials only made use of the Designer tab of the Room Editor. Let's press the Background tab and add a colorful background. Two types of backgrounds are currently supported by the Studio, Solid Color and Tile. Selecting a solid color background replaces the white background with another color to your liking. This is done using the palette. The second type of background is Tile. This type of background splits the screen into a predefined number of tiles, both vertically and horizontally, and allows the game creator to place different images in place of these tiles. The default grid contains a single tile. Let's modify the grid and make it 5x5. Five five. As can be seen, a grid appears where different images may be placed. Due to memory and performance limitations of most mobile handsets, it is highly recommended to make use of a tile background instead of using a single large image. Reusing the same image reduces memory consumption and enhances performance. Still, for the sake of simplicity, we will only use the background with the single image. Let's set the grid back to one by one. Just as with animations, before images can be used as tiles in the background, we must first add them to the image background pool. Let's add the supplied c.png image. Now that the image has been added, it may be set as the background by clicking anywhere in the grid. Moving back to the Designer tab, we can see that the background filled our entire room. This may not be desirable because it stretches the background, making it larger than the screen size. As I've mentioned before, large images hurt performance. Let's go back to the Background tab. Now let's press the Static button at the top. Notice that our image suddenly shrunk. Moving back to the Designer tab, we can see that the image now fills the screen and is not the room size. You should also notice that when the screen is dragged around the room, the background follows and maintains its position. The screen indicates the viewable area that will be seen when we run the game. Let's set the screen back to the corner of the room. Doing this using drag and drop is pretty hard. We will do it in a better way. Right-click the frame of the screen and a context menu pops up. We will modify the X and Y values back to zero and the screen goes back to its place. We now have a nice background, but no fish. Let's load the fish sprite we created in previous tutorials. Click Import on the top ribbon and now select the MoFish1 project folder. In the list of game items, check Animated Fish and click Next. Now click Finish. As you can see, our animated fish sprite was added to the list. Let's put an instance in the room and run it in the simulator. Remember to skip the menu level. Now we have the fish we created in a previous tutorial swimming inside our newly created scene. We will exit the simulator and save the game as MoFish2, so we will be able to use it in a future tutorial. This brings the tutorial to an end. 
I hope you enjoyed watching. See you again in future tutorials.